All right, in this video, we are just going to do a quick overview on how to make embedded fonts work for Kindle when you create an EPUB in InDesign. Now, this does require some work to, uh, by cracking open the EPUB and working on the HTML files that are within it. So if you do not know how to do that, I encourage you to watch some of my EPUB tutorials so you'll know how to do those little tweaks within the actual ebook file. I never work with, um, I never use an EPUB straight from InDesign. I do a lot of work to it after the fact. So uh, those videos will walk you through my process for that. So to make fonts work, right? Let's talk about the reason why fonts don't work for Kindle, okay? Now Kindle, when you upload um, an EPUB to KDP um, for sale, it, they take that EPUB and they convert it into their proprietary format. <clears throat> used to be a Mobi, but now it's um, KPF or something like that. Y you can you can uh, see what file type is on, on Kindle Previewer. Um, so they accept EPUBs now. They convert that EPUB to their format, which works on, um, which is what they sell uh, in the Kindle store. So that conversion process actually strips certain things out of eBooks. And one of those things um, is the encryption file that InDesign includes when you tell InDesign to embed an EPUB. I'm, I'm sorry, when you tell InDesign to embed fonts into your EPUB. So um, it, InDesign also, so they include the encryption file, but they also take the fonts that you want to embed and they create a new font file from the, the fonts by obfuscating the fonts. Okay, so what they do is, let's say you use Futura, um, they take that Futura font and they remove any characters that were not used in the EPUB from that font file and, and generate a new font file of Futura just for the EPUB. And so the encryption file tells whatever reading device or application is used to read that ebook, how to read that obfuscated font. From my understanding, that's probably very simple compared to what it actually does, but that's kind of a general quick overview of what happens. So because uh, Kindle, in their process of creating um, a once they take the EPUB, they um, tweak it to their format. In that process, they remove the encryption file. Therefore, the instructions on how to read that obfuscated font are no longer there. So those fonts do not show up because they're not the full font versions. So why does InDesign um, create the encryption file and obfuscate the fonts? Well, if you look at any font license, uh, most of them will say they cannot be put into a PDF or a um, ebook without encryption. So font licensing requires those fonts to be encrypted. So how can we get around that? Okay, because if Kindle can't read those obfuscated fonts with the encryption file because it gets rid of it, then how can we do that? Well, number one, always use open source fonts, okay? So any Google font is great for embedding into ebooks. Now, you say, well, I have this special font, this is what my client wants to use. You're just not gonna, it's just not possible at this time. Until Kindle stops removing that encryption file, um, therefore making those obfuscated fonts uh, unreadable, you know, there's this is kind of the only workaround for it and that's to use open source font. Okay, so number two in the process. So number one, use open source fonts. Number two, once you have your EPUB, you have to crack it open. So if you don't know how to crack it open, uh, look back on my YouTube channel for some of my other ebook uh, creation processes that will walk you through how to, how to crack it open, okay? So, You'll remove the encryption file, and I'll show you how to do that in just a minute. I'll show you where the encryption file is at within the EPUB package. 
Um, and then we are going to replace those obfuscated fonts with the full versions. And then if needed, we're going to update any content, um, any information on the content OPF page that may have changed. Now, if you're keeping all the fonts that were exported, you don't need to do anything here. But for me, when I create an ebook, I typically do not include, like this is Adobe Garamond, I do not include that. Um, this is Montserrat, I do not include that because, so anything that's kind of a generic sans serif or uh, serif font, I will not include um, in my, in my EPUB file. What I do include is any kind of decorative font that the base uh, fonts of an ebook device may not replace properly. So that's any script or any handwriting font, I will definitely embed those. So this is the only font I'm actually going to include in this particular ebook. And this is a Google font called Pacifico. So you can use any Google font because they're all open source. So that means you can embed them into your ebook without needing to um, obfuscate them, on, which is basically kind of like an encryption process, I guess you could say. Um, for all those technical people, you know, I'm probably way off, but I got the basic idea down. So here we go. Pacifico, I have already uh, created the ebook. So to create your uh, EPUB, you just go to export, export as an EPUB, and then when you, um, the text information is, well, HTML right here. So on the HTML and CSS page, you will always say include embeddable fonts. Okay, so always check that if you want to include the, um, inc embed the fonts into your EPUB. So that is step one is use that Google font. Okay, step two is remove that encryption file. So when you crack open an EPUB, this is a, uh, the heart of an EPUB. This is a, an EPUB is basically a zip file. So if you change that EPUB file extension to a zip file and then extract the zip file, you can see all the contents of an ebook. So you have the MIME type file, an OEBPS folder, and the meta INF folder. So the encryption file is found in the meta INF folder. So you just delete that XML file out of that meta INF folder and you've remo removed the encryption file. Now, the fonts will be in the OEBPS folder under font, and these are all the fonts that were embedded into my book. Now, I do not want all of these. I only want Pacifico because the rest are those generic sans serif and serif fonts that I really don't need to um, waste space for my ebook file. So we are going to actually delete all of those, okay? And the only one that's left is Pacifico. Now, I want you to look at the file size of Pacifico. It's only 26 kilobytes because this is actually the obfuscated version of the font, okay? Now, I only use this on my chapter titles, which are Jenna and Mark, so it's a very limited, um, obfuscated font and that it's only got a handful of characters. So I actually need to replace this with the full font, font version. So on my computer, I have a whole um, directory of Google fonts that have all of the full versions in here. So all I need to do is look for Pacifico and I have a true type version right here. So I'm just gonna copy that and then make sure the file name is the same and I'm gonna paste it and it's gonna ask me if I wanna replace it, yes. And so now that file size goes from that small file size to 308. Now, fonts this big, I typically don't like to embed them because of the ebook size, but um, that's it depends on your author um, whether they would want to do that or not. So you kinda of have to pay attention to those file sizes. All right, so now let's look at our little checklist here. So we have done, we're using open source fonts. Pacifico is an open source Google font. I removed the encryption. 
And then step three, I replaced the obfuscated fonts with the full versions and then um, update content OPF page as well as the CSS. Okay, so I am going to do step four now. So the content OPF page is right here. So I open it and I use Dreamweaver because it comes with the Adobe Suite. Um, so what you need to do now, the content OPF page is basically all the information that is packaged in your EPUB file. So we have metadata here, we have a manifest, and a manifest is just like a plain manifest where it lists all the contents of your ebook file. And then we have a spine which creates the order of your ebook file. It tells it to put these pages in order, in this order. And then we have the guide which includes our table of contents, um, our cover, if you want to tell it to start on a certain page, you can you can add uh, a reference to the start of the book. Um, so there's a lot of things you can add to the guide, but I, I typically keep it simple and uh, keep what InDesign has in there. But on the manifest part of the OPF page, you're going to see all of the fonts listed. Okay. So since we removed all of those fonts, we need to remove those from the content OPF page with the exception of Pacifico. So we can delete all of these. So Garamond, Montserrat, um, Myriad Pro, and Oswald, I'm gonna delete all those out. And the only one that's left is Pacifico. Now, Pacifico was a true type font and true type fonts, this right here, this X font TTF will cause a um, problem when you try to validate the EPUB in, on certain um, on certain programs. They do not like that X font TTF. It says it's not um, an eligible application or eligible media type for uh, for EPUB three. So I simply replace that with that vnd.ms open type font and and. and and just keep the true type font in there, but just replace that part right there and then it will validate. Okay. All right. So last thing is, is we're going to look at the CSS and I'm going to remove on the CSS at the very top. They have all the fonts that are embedded. I'm just going to remove those and just keep Pacifico there. Then all you have to do is package up your EPUB and send it to Kindle. And for the most part, those fonts will show up on your Kindle device. Now, there are certain times that it does not do it. A lot of times if you send direct to a Kindle device or if you try to sideload it, a lot of times those fonts will not show up. Um, so that's something to be aware of. There's just certain fonts, certain devices, and certain applications just do not show the embedded fonts. All right, I hope that's helpful. If you have any questions, don't hesitate to reach out to me.